It's time for the Douglas Coleman Show. Mr. Smooth and Savvy is joined by guests from all walks of life. From the entertainment industry to authors to political and social commentators. The famous and not so famous. The controversial and the light and fluffy. We have it all. Now, here's Douglas Coleman. Douglas? Yes. William's on the phone. Hi, William. Hey, Douglas. How are you? Good. Can you speak up a little? Can just barely hear you. Oh, of course. Of course. Can, <laughs> can, is that better? Oh, that's much better. Yes. Thank oh, you. good. Okay. How have you been? What's up? Oh, not too much. Thank you for coming on the show. It's nice to have you here. And My pleasure. I was looking over your bio and looking at your IMDb and all that kind of stuff. You are a familiar face. I think I have actually seen you. <laughs> I think I think you'd have to live on some other planet <laughs> not to have caught something I did. I've been in every every uh show you can name. Um, the one No, it's been a long and checkered career. Oh, I bet. The, the one I wanted to ask, you, actually there's two on your list yeah, here yeah. that I can't remember what you played in them, but I certainly remember the movies. Uh, the Green Mile was one. Were you the guy in the electric oh. booth that was throwing the switch? <laughs> no, you're confusing two two of my roles. I was the that that was the Tales from the first episode of Tales from the Crypt. I was the executioner who oh. threw the switch okay. and said, "I sure hope." They <laughs> say they say electricity is fast, and they don't feel any pain. I sure hope that ain't true. And then I threw the switch. And in the Green Mile, I was the father of the two little girls that got murdered. Oh, oh, okay. All right. That sent that sent John Coffey to... To the chair. To, uh, yeah. Like, to the chair, yeah. So oh, I, was, okay. I was the one at the end. By the time you see me again at the end, I, I go, I'm the only one who's yelling, who is yelling for John Coffey to be executed at the end, you know, because I haven't seen the rest of the movie, you know. (laughs) Right. I I still, he just murdered my two little girls, and I want him to get what's coming to him, and yeah. Okay. So what was the the other movie that you saw, that you were... (laughs) (laughs) That I actually saw? Uh, You forgot. uh, No, Kinsey. Oh, yeah, I played Klaus... Oh you wait a minute! I think I think I know who you were. You were that kind of strange, perverted yeah. guy that could in ten seconds. That's the guy. That's the one. oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I remember that seconds. scene now. Okay. And they say that's not possible. And before they can say, well, the, I don't think that's physically possible. I've already got it out, and I'm in ten seconds. Oh, that's funny. Okay, I laughed wow. through that that's whole like, scene. It's a yeah. <laughs> I thought that was great. A good movie, by the way. I mean, really good. It is. A, I, yeah. It is a good movie. It's, you don't. You don't often see Liam Neeson play. You know, calm you know, scientists, or you know, he's not beating people up. Um, yeah, I don't remember him in a kind of in like an intellectual role like that. It's usually he's the badass going after his daughter that was kidnapped by terrorists or something like that. Right. Well, yeah. I think Schindler's List was the only other time I can remember when he p- played somebody who, yeah, it wasn't a revenge tragedy. It wasn't a, you know, they they killed his son. Now he's a force of one. Yeah, it wasn't like a Charles Bronson type role. Yeah, yeah. Oh, exactly. Kinsey was fun to play. He only has the one scene, but it's it sort of burned into everybody's memory and who saw the movie because it's a it, he's an actual real character he was a he, Klaus Brunn was uh, he worked for the forestry service and he and Kinsey had written back and forth for years letters back and forth you know saying you know with <laughs> this guy saying I've uh, you know I've done it with animals and I've done it with children and I've done it with you know and I'm you know, and Kinsey, Kinsey wanted all that information, but there was no way to get it legally or ethically in a lab or, you know, 
it was all it was all illegal so when they finally got together it was a 19 hour interview with this character wow. and it mm. it sort of put an end to Kinsey's career too the fun, all of a sudden his funding was gone in that movie though i mean he did have a lot of trouble i mean he was getting all of his artifacts were getting confiscated by customs for being obscene and uh, he must have had a lot of legal wranglings throughout his oh, can, time. Yeah. Well, you, you can imagine back in the early 50s when, you know, he's, he's coming forward with this, this theory that everyone is on a bell, it's a bell curve, homosexuality, you know, it ex- <laughs> everybody, is, everybody is somewhere on this curve. I don't think America was ready for the... Yeah, everybody's a little bit gay, right, yeah. Well, yeah, you know, to one degree or another, and it's, you know, it's it's just there, and he, you know, he described it, but I don't think, and I think America punished him for it. (laughs) They were like, you know, well, I'm not, that ain't me. Did he live for a long time? Kind of still... What's that? Did he live a long time? I don't know how his lifespan was. Did he? It seems like in the movie he died kind of of old age, basically. Yeah, I think he. I, I, I don't really know. I don't uh, know the answer to that one. I do know he was ostracized. He was pretty. You know, he was at first he was you know on the cover of Life magazine with his this research, and then he was you know 19, early nineteen fifties morals of America just overwhelmed him. I think they took away his lab and his his money and what have you. They didn't want to hear what he had to say. I know that there was a later scene in that film that I'm remembering where he had a like a, a speaking engagement of some sort, and people just one by one started to walk out on him. Yeah. You know, till there was like five people left in the room, and it started out with a hundred people or something like that. I remember that one scene. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, well, you you know, this was back before I Love Lucy where they had to you couldn't show a married couple in the same bed. You had they had to be in separate beds. They had, or they had to have one foot on the one floor. One foot on the floor. <laughs> you know, that kind of bullshit. Yeah. And it's a you know, it was a, it was a very very uptight <laughs> America. We were a bunch of prudes. You know, okay. If you were if you were gay in that America, you moved to San Francisco, or you moved to New York, or you you know you had to go find a a, a community where you wouldn't get beaten to death. You know, or maybe you moved to Paris if you could afford it. But, yeah, yeah, or something. You yeah. got the, but you got the hell out of the little country town. You know. Anyways, You're well, here. enough about me. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing fine. I did want to ask you one question about your website, and then we, let's pivot over to your new film, because that's why you're okay, here great. to promote it. But I, uh, your people sent us your website, williamsadler.org, and at the very bottom, I just read it and I laughed, and it said, I don't know if you know what it says, but it says, uh, williamsadler.org is a website dedicated to the work of American actor William Sadler. I am in no way affiliated with this person, his management, nor his family. All content except otherwise noted as copyright, blah, 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 blah. So yeah. this, this is a what's total the, stranger the deal? that just that's set a up. Fan, that's a fan site. That's not, my, that's not my website. Oh, well, why did they send my, this one to us then? Because this is the well, only link I got. They, that's a good question. Mine, mine, you could go to the real William Sadler dot com. Oh, okay. <laughs> if you go oh, to the real that the one you're describing is a fan. It's a site fan page. Yeah. Who, yeah. Yeah. It's just a fan page. They people who love you know they like my work and they have followed me and so on. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that isn't mine. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> and on mine, I have actually you can there's a place to click. I've written an album of songs. I've actually written a couple of albums, but there's oh. only one album out there now called The Kitchen Tapes. During the pandemic, I, I made this album. And if you go to therealwilliamsadler.com, you can click on the music button, there, and it'll take you to a place where you can purchase uh, an album or a CD of that album. 
and the money goes to St. Jude's uh, Children's Hospital. So oh, very good. I Whoop. thought I'd get a plug in for that. <laughs> what kind of music do you do? I, I, I guess it's I guess it's folk or urban folk. I have a sense of humor and a yeah, yeah. It's a mostly, sense of humor. Mostly, ac- mostly acoustic. There's a violin. It's kind of a, a lot of humor. A lot of funny. Funny songs know. like uh, Red Peters type stuff. Can't. Yeah, kind of, I guess, and but it's a but it's a mix. I mean, there's uh, when I when I do a show uh, with my guitar um, and sing my songs, it's it's a it's a mix. You know, some of them are romantic and it's kind of kind of straight songs, but a lot of them are tongue in cheek. I try to get the audience laughing. Oh, all right. I wrote a country song called "I Guess I'll Always Love You." You lying sack of shit! <laughs> I'll have to check. <laughs> oh, that I didn't out. ask. I didn't ask if I could swear on oh, yeah, the show. I'm yeah. sorry. There's no problem. I apologize. Anyway, I did this movie. Yeah, called A Stage called of Twilight. Stage of Twilight. After all these years, they finally someone asked me to do a movie where he's he's just in love with his wife, and um, they've been together for forty some years. And, you know, he doesn't kill anyone. He doesn't have a, there's no gunplay. There's, he's not an evil villain. He's just, he loves, he loves this woman and he's been with her forever. And he gets a bad diagnosis and they have to deal with, he's got, <laughs> he's got some very pig headed ideas about, he doesn't want her to see him deteriorating. So he's going to like, you know, go off somewhere like a cat and be sick and, and uh, she's she's not having any of it. And it's Karen Allen that I that I play opposite. She plays my wife, and she's just magnificent. She's ab- we're both pretty we're both pretty good. There was a wonderful chemistry between us. I thought, um, and it was and it was fabulous to get a chance to play someone who's funny and in love and dealing with. Dealing with human, you know, human dramas rather than what I dealt with in other movies, Die Hard or Iron Man Three or whatever. This was, uh, this was. It's a really heartfelt, beautiful story. Is it like a Lifetime Channel movie? It, I guess it might be. Um, I like to think it's, it's better than. <laughs> better than better that, than lot, okay. <laughs> maybe better than that. Um, I mean, it's been to all these festivals, and it keeps winning best, it, you know, best actor, best actress, best picture, best, you know, best, best, best. And it's a tearjerker, though. It, it sounds it, like, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, but how they get there, it makes all the difference in the world. There's a lot of courage and a lot of love and. And the writer director, Sarah Schwab, it's not her very first movie, but it's she's she's a young she's a young director, and I I'll work with her again anytime anywhere. I thought she did a one. She, it's actually the kind. Of, it's loosely based on what happened to her, her father, so it has it oh, just okay. rings true. It just has this ring of of authenticity and Karen Allen and I and the rest of the cast just, uh, just I know I fell in love with the thing I it was it was wonderful to go there and do that with those people even even on such a small budget and such a limited period of time we had like they shot it in 18 days or something it was it was very quick um, and and a very tiny budget but it's remarkable what you can do with uh, if the material you're working with is is that good. Oh, I agree with you. I've had uh, many indie guys on here who have done what I thought were beautiful films for fifty thousand, a mm. hundred thousand. Yeah, and it's all about the story. It's always been about the story, and I think it always will be. You know, it doesn't need CGI. Uh, it doesn't need. <laughs> 
you know, 50 <laughs> different locations. Or AI. Or yeah. AI. Or, no, yeah. I, I, I completely agree. It's like a, it is, it's a, it is the story. Yeah. It's like that's, that's the only reason Shawshank is what it is, is it's, the, it's this wonderful story. And that's, I think, the ride that people go along, you know, you, you, you know, get I caught mean, up. You, you just, get caught up in the ride, yeah. you know. And it, and the strength of the story is how strong the movie is. What I, I what I seem to find guy. is <laughs> is it the more I'm not a, the more sort of AI CGI that's infused into the film, uh, it takes away from the story. In other words, people are just going to see that to see the effects. And it doesn't right. really matter what the story is. I mean, the last James yeah. Bond I saw, I think he had, you know, 15 words of dialogue in the whole movie. And it was just all, you know, action and different locations in one scene. And now he's driving a Ferrari and this and that and boom. But, you know, the story was, was nothing. Yeah, it, you can't even. It's hard to even follow the find the story underneath all of the special effects. I I agree. I agree. It's into, I, I always. I, it's one of my favorite things to do is to watch movies where they've spent hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars, <laughs> and and they have you know the biggest star they can find, and the, and it's CGI'd up the wazoo, and and sit there and think you know why am why don't i care about this thing why am i not uh why am why am i not blown away by this movie because i think they i think they assemble the movies with you know we'll get this and we'll get that we'll get this director and we'll get that actor and we'll get those and way down at the bottom of the totem pole if they haven't started with a story a compelling story i don't i don't think the audience cares much you know it's like a it's like a, a ride in the county fair, you know. Yeah, I agree. You Jim, get a couple, you get a few thrills, <laughs> but you don't come away with anything um, that sticks to you. Two hundred million, two hundred million dollars, and the script is forty pages long. You know, there's something wrong with that. Yeah, or the script, or the script they took a they took a script. <laughs> what often happens is they take a script and then they hire someone else to rewrite it. And then, you know, the star has their own writer go over it and change it some more. And it, I, 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 it's a it's a balancing act, you know. I you know I don't want to <clears throat> I don't want to go back to the days of black and white and it's just you know two people talking in a room. But uh, <laughs> well, it is a balancing over, act. Yeah. I think they can lean on it too much. And say, well, this is for the, you know, this is the big battle scene between Godzilla and the, you know, or, or, and and the whole movie is like one battle scene after another after another, uh, one catastrophe after another because they can do it all CGI. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. You know? I just had an author on uh, whose name is Scott Ryan, and he just wrote a book called The Last Decade of Cinema, and he picked the early 1990s as the sort of crosshair point where there was wow. enough technology yet the stories because the early 90s he said every movie that he, he watched like 168 movies in in the course of a year all from that time period like 91 right. to 94 something and yeah. he said that, good, that good it, it was year. just the right time before CGI took over and uh, it was a real interesting interview to to listen to him, and he uh, he had uh, Patricia Arquette come in to uh, you know help with the book or gave a some kind of dialogue or something for the book, and he said that she really had had it down because he was interviewing her about True Romance. You remember that movie? Good movie. Mm -hmm. And good movie. Yeah, and it was just the right time where the stories were still strong. But there was still, technology was still good. There was a bit of CGI, but not too much. Uh, he just well, that's when you get, yeah. That's when you got um, Forrest Gump and yeah. Uh, oh, there was a whole bunch of movies. Yeah, and 
the Shawshank Redemption and so on. That was, was there too, yeah. That was 93, I think, 94. Yeah. Yeah, and not one Marvel comic movie for that time. Yeah. That made the, you know, made the cut. <laughs> which, I, which I love, and I've been in them, you know. I've been, I was in, you know, I've been in the Marvel Universe. I've played the president in Iron Man 3. And it's it's great fun. Those are those are those are wonderful rides too. But as often happens, the 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 CGI, the technology overtakes everybody else. They spend all their. I, there was a movie. What the hell was it? The Indian in the Closet. I think it was called. Don't and remember spent, that one. Yeah. No. It came and went. It was a flop. Um, and I'm trying to. I, I remember it because I read for it, <laughs> oh. and didn't, and I didn't get the role. <laughs> but it was, but it was this little boy. He has these little plastic toy Indians and toy cowboys and so on, and they come to life. So they had to build a, a set where this kid could, it, um, you know, these little, all these little characters were walking around on the kid's bed and in his bedroom. And it would be easy to do, now they could do it in 10 minutes, but at the time, I could tell when I saw the, when I read the movie, I thought, this is a wonderful, this is a really wonderful story. This is kind of everybody's childhood. And then when I saw the movie, I realized that they had spent 95% of their interest and time and money on the special effects. And whatever was left over was, the kid, you know, yeah. the acting, and and there and there he was in the center of every scene, and it wasn't, um, you know, it wasn't compelling. It wasn't. I didn't. I didn't care. They were wonderful special effects, but nobody remembers the story. The Indian in the closet. I have to. I think look, that was. The, I have to look yeah. that up. I mean, it, it would have died just on the title alone. I think. Yeah. Well. That's a pretty lame title. I, I don't. Right. <laughs> what is it, Craig? Well, I'm in the stage of Twilight. Um, oh, that's a good title. Dude, we are, that's we a, argued that's a about fine that title. title too. Yeah, that no, that's titles a fine. Are title. important. Titles are titles can sure they are. Yeah, can help you a lot. It's funny you you said you were a musician, and I always I'm a musician as well. I've been a lifelong musician, and not a money making one by any stretch of the imagination, but. I yeah, always was I. very particular when I wrote songs to make sure that I did not steal someone else's title because you can't copyright a title. And there are right. <laughs> are so many different songs with the same freaking title, and it makes me nuts. I mean, the one that I looked yeah. up that I had to laugh was Hold On. Do you know there are 10 uh -huh. different songs with the title Hold On, and they were all hits at one point or another? Uh -huh. Carlos Santana had one, and I can't even remember. Hart had one. And it just, it was like, why did you name the song something that's Hold already on. been done? You know, even though it's not, it's legal, you, you, you can't copyright a title. But when I see movies that come out like that with the same title as something else, it's like, why? I don't yeah. know. Usually the, usually the song title comes from the hook, like whatever the, whatever it, Whatever yeah. phrase gets re gets repeated a dozen times throughout the song, that becomes you know she loves you, um, help. Right. Um, Yesterday, um, right. right? Yeah, yeah. The, the piece that that becomes the title. But you're right. There's, and in the movie world, it's it's of paramount importance. It's uh, you know it really helps the film to have a title that you know is compelling. Is you know people see. Uh, it's, it tells you something about what the film is about, like Die Hard or The Expendables, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but there were there were terrible arguments. We did a when we did Shawshank. The the the, the novella was called Rita Hayworth and Shawshank Redemption. That's the title of, and that was the the title of the script that we shot. And the and then there were arguments back and forth and people submitted lists of other titles what else can what else can you call it because th no one knows what a shawshank is 
that doesn't mean anything. And redemption sounds religious. And then you find out that it's a prison movie. And it's like it opened in the theaters and it closed in the theaters. Like three weeks later, it was gone. And it didn't make any money. I think it made $18 million or something. It didn't make its money back in the theaters. It was and until it was nominated for seven Academy Awards and lost <laughs> lost to Gump almost every single was that was the unfortunate thing was Gump came out the same year, but then it got discovered. Then you know it got discovered in video when it went to, and, to video. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. And Ted Turner, you know Turner classic movies played it every week or a couple times a month and. Uh, and uh, America discovered this movie with a funny name. Well, I is, uh, is Sha- you said right, nobody knows right. what Shawshank means. It sounds uh, Native American. Is that is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, it sounds like I a think. tribe, like the Shawshank tribe. He made tribe. it up. Oh, they made it up? Stephen yeah. King made it up. He oh. didn't, it, it's, it's the title. It's, a, it's an imaginary town in Maine. It's oh, this, okay. It's a, an imaginary prison. It's an imaginary world, and there is no, there is no place called Shawshank, you know. Um, or no and tribe. And it does sound okay. Native American. Yeah, it You're sounds right. like a tribal name, like the indigenous it, Shawshank. What's peoples. a redemp- And it's a redem- And what's Rita Hayworth got to do with it? And the t- the title was like uh, they anguished over the title. Well, why so, was Rita Hayworth's name on there? Did she do something? Well, she was. She was the poster. She was the big damn poster that covered the hole in the wall that oh. Andy Dufresne escaped through. At first, it was she was the movie that they saw, that they watch, and then Andy Andy asks for a poster of Rita Hayworth. He says, "I want." He tells Red, "I want Rita Hayworth." And and when he gets out of solitary confinement, he's or back from the hospital. Um, there's a big damn poster, and he uses Rita Hayworth to cover the hole that he's digging in the wall. Oh, okay. Um, All right. And then, it, and then it became Raquel, Raquel Welsh. But, but that's where that's where she came from. That's where that name came from. I'm gonna have to Which watch that movie again because I haven't seen it, and it has to be so thirty years. But uh, well, first you gotta watch a stage of Twilight. Yeah. I highly recommend. You know, as a matter of fact, I was just going to ask you that because we got the trailer, or not the trailer, the screener uh, from your people. Mm-hmm. They were nice enough to send it. Uh, I was going to say, this sounds like a movie that I should watch with my wife. Uh, is this something that... Yeah. I mean, I know you don't know you my wife, but is this something that... I don't know your wife. <laughs> <laughs> because her and I have very different taste in movies, and we rarely sit down together. And, you know, she's doing her thing, I'm doing mine. And we rarely sit down together and watch a movie. But would this be one yeah. that I could probably say, hey, come on, honey, let's watch this one? And If you watch, if you watch this with your wife, I think she'll... Yeah, I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure she'll... She'll get into it. She'll get drawn into it. It's about a relationship. It's about a... Yeah, okay. Right. And, it's, and these, this couple has been together long enough that, you know, finally, and it happens, you know, it, it, it's part of life. It's just part of life. Every, you know, every single couple that stays together long enough faces some version of this, you know, the, these problems. And it's, you know, and it's just, a, it's a, it's a beautiful story and it's, and it's well told. So, yeah, your wife will love it. Okay. I get. <laughs> Thank you. It's not a movie. You know, it's 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 not a movie about fishing, or uh, you know, I don't know what else you guys like. Uh, well, she doesn't. Always, she's I, not I have big the same, into I have the, the same problem. My wife. Yeah. Um, she likes you know movies with heart, movies yeah. with soul. Movies yeah. She likes a good story. Shit. You know, she likes. Yeah. Yeah, she's she's not going to watch yeah. you know the 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 hour and a half of nothing but CGI. That's just that's just boring for her, you know. I will. I'll do I'm, that. I'll, yeah. and, and I'll appreciate it. But I'm but but then you know I like movies about racing cars and uh, you know guy guy things that interest me and actions. I'll watch <laughs> I'll watch action movies. Uh, just because they're a fun, they're you know 
they're a different kind of ride. Yeah. I, don't, I can turn my brain off and just enjoy the... Well, I can... Uh, here, I'll give you a hint. Her favorite movie, at least it was, was Sling Blade. Wow. Okay. So... Brilliant movie. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant movie. Brilliant movie. Yeah. But you care, you care about that dumb bastard, that poor fellow that... You care about him. You care about the kid. Oh, yeah. You care about... Yeah. The, it's a beautiful little relationship that d- develops there. And then when he sees Jeopardy, he steps forward and does what he does, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, she's got good, she's got good taste. That's a, You know who I thought was brilliant good. in that? Well, they were all brilliant in it. But I thought John Ritter's character was particularly good I, in that movie. I did, too. Yeah. I, I thought so. I thought so, too. And I worked with John Ritter on Hooperman. Oh. <laughs> Speaking of this career that's gone on forever, um, I, w- I did one episode of Hooperman, and I was a guest star. I was a guest actor, and he was he was so nice. He was love. He was so lovely. You know, came over, introduced himself, introduced me to the camera guys, um, and just made me feel comfortable and part of the part of the family and it's the it's one of the hardest things that actors do is to step into a a series that's running and uh, you're the guest you know you're the you're the you're the story that week you i always feel like i'm stepping onto a bus that's going 80 miles an hour and i don't know anybody you know I, I don't know a soul, and they all know, they're, the, and they're like a baseball team. They've, this is the 158th game they've played. Um, so you're, you're at a terrible disadvantage, and it's very nerve-wracking. Everybody's watching you, you know, what's he going to do, what's he going to do? So, he, he was a great I, actor, I, and I, I'm I thought, just... Yeah, he was, I thought he was, he was just wonderful. And he I'm sorry he died person. so young, you know. That was sad. I also love Dwight Yoakam, by the way. Yeah, he was good I, in that. He was good. He scared the daylights out of me. <laughs> he, there was something so authentic about his threatening character. I was like, whoa. I was, I was actually worried for the kid, and, uh, you know. I think somewhere in uh, America, if, if you grew up here in this country, you were born here, you've met somebody like that, you know, that just was okay, barely tolerable, but when they got drunk, they were just a nasty son of a bitch. And I, I think no. we've all had those experiences with... It, cha- it really yeah. changes their personality. Yeah. They're completely... Mm. Yeah. And they become this, that sort of belligerent, nasty, you know, ignorant... Just out of control. You know, they just... Yeah. The rage is just there. And it's... Uh, yeah, I've had my share of those Which people. Me- you know. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that's a. I agree. I agree with your wife. I think Sling Blade was a masterful. It was a really wonderful film. So how does and how does a stage of Twilight stack up to Sling Blade? Well, um, nobody gets murdered. Okay. Uh, that's that's a that's start. That's one thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's maybe it, it's it's maybe a slightly gentler story. Okay. But. Um, but it's, but it's, uh, but it's. I don't. It's no less compelling. I think it's no less. Like I said, it's loosely based on what re- what really happened. You know, with her, di- with Sarah Schwab's father, and it's also. I got it. Part of why. Part of why I love it as much as I do. I mean, aside from Karen Allen, working with Karen Allen was just a joy. She's a. She's magnificent in it. She's worth the price of admission, you know, forget me. But I've never been asked to play a role like that. And, you know, and it was like sitting down at a banquet. I don't know how to, I don't know how else to describe it. I got to go deeper and further and more intimate and more, uh, more revealing and more committed. I don't know, uh, than any other movie role I've ever played, I think. So... So I'm proud of it, and I, and I'm glad that I'm glad to hear that it was something you know sort of satisfying for you, um, because oh yeah, you can get, yeah very much so. yeah you can get roles that maybe wouldn't be, 
or, you know, same thing, same old thing over and over. But, <laughs> well, and I have. And, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But they pay the bills, too, right? So, and you, yeah. Well, you know, it's a career. It's a, right. You look back, you know, that's what, a, that's what a career is. You look back and you say, oh, holy crap, did I look at all that stuff. I, I see and Bill you know, and Ted's each one, on each one has too. different challenges and so yeah. on, but. I see Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey and Bill and Ted Face the Music. I didn't know they did that many. How many Bill and Ted's were there? I know three. There was three? Just, there were just three. There, the first one was Excellent Adventure back in the 80s. Oh, okay, right. And then, and, then, and then in the early 90s was Bogus Journey, which was one of the best sequels and funniest films and created a uh, fan base that continues to this day. There were... Bill and Ted fan clubs, and then thirty years after we made Bill and Ted, Bo- Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, they all got, we all got together in New Orleans and made the third one. Bill and Ted go to um, face the music. That one is and, with uh, the with Keanu and uh, yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah. Okay, it's their old man. You know, they're. <laughs> I don't know if you remember the plot of the second movie. They have to write a. They have to write a song that will save the universe. Oh, you know, and they go and back and meet you know, Beethoven they, or whatever they called him, something like that. Well, that was, or that well, was that's the first the one. history exam, but oh, okay. They, okay, that's in the first one. In the second one, they die. They're killed by evil robots, and uh, they go to hell, and they meet the Grim Reaper, and they have to play games with the Grim Reaper to get their souls back to uh, come back to Earth, and they do, and I played the Reaper. And, uh, okay. And then, the, and then the Reaper joins the band in the Battle of the Bands. He, he <laughs> plays bass in, in the Wild Stallion's band, and that's, uh, that was Bogus Journey. And then, of course, in this one 30 years later, <laughs> face the music. They they they're old men they're older men now and they still haven't written the song that saves the universe and they're playing at like the Holiday Inn lounge. Oh, that you know, sounds funny. That does. They're sound like funny. they're a complete kind of failures as musicians and as a the, the Wild Stallions band uh, that was going to conquer the world back in '91. They haven't done it. But they have these two daughters, and the and the two daughters step up and uh, become the new band, you know, along with their dads and the Grim. And then they have to go to hell and get the Grim Reaper to join rejoin the band. So there's a scene with the Reaper. He wants to know why they kicked him out of the band all those years ago. And they say, well, because you played 40-minute bass solos. <laughs> okay. And he says, well, I was in the groove. Well, William, we do have to wind this down, but I, I think I've got my Saturday night uh, planned out here. I think I'll watch uh, <laughs> a stage of Twilight with my wife, and I'll see if I there can find uh, Bill and Ted face the music, and that one would be a solo watch. I don't think she would have any interest in that whatsoever, but that sounds hysterically funny for me so it's a it, it's a it's really pretty good i mean they it's the same writers it's the it's the same it's the same actors it's the same writers and it's this and the continuation of the same trilogy it's the same story just continued 30 years later they haven't the I'm, I'm looking still in peril. i'm looking for the the new spinal tap movie that's coming apparently it's a similar <laughs> idea because Harry Shearer is like 80 years old now, and they, they all yeah. reunited, the original three, and they're trying to, you know, navigate the modern music scene with Spotify and streaming and selling merch and all that kind of stuff. And oh, it looks oh, hysterical. Fantastic. Yeah. Because, yeah. Because the landscape has changed so much. I mean, it just looks like, that sounds hysterical. And I saw that it was in pre-post or... It was supposed to come out this spring, but it, it hasn't come out yet, I don't think. But I keep an eye out for it, because that's... Uh, Pre, pre-post? 
pre post post pre I don't know it was somewhere <laughs> um, Douglas <laughs> Okay, well, I hope they make the movie, and I hope it's as I hope it's as satisfying as the first one was. That's a it's always it's always hard, but that's a funny premise that they get back together and and try to navigate the digital world. I should probably let you go. Well, it was a delight talking to you. A lot of fun. I know we could have just gone on forever and talking about movies, but uh, your movie is called A Stage of Twilight, and it is out. Where is it available? Where can people see it? Um, you can go on it. You can get it on Amazon. Oh, what okay. I'm told you can just you can rent it. You can buy it. You can available uh, for streaming or, or purchase wherever. Yeah. Where, yeah, wherever okay. fine movies are sold. That sounds like a winner. All right, how long has it been out? Um, I think it just came. I think it just. Really, it was in the theaters about a month ago, so it's it's pretty fresh. Well, thank you so much I mean, for coming. We on made it. Yeah, thank you. It's been it's been a fun a fun talk. Been a fun chat, and uh, I look forward to watching this. I'm going to do it tomorrow night. Okay. And I'll let you know how my wife likes it. it. <laughs> yeah, let me know. Let yeah. me know. Get okay. get word back to me. I want to hear how your wife likes it. Okay, we'll do. <laughs> Make some popcorn. <laughs> All right, William. I'll see you. Take care. All right, bye-bye. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Okay, bye.